Last question that I always ask people. This thing, this podcast for me, it's all about enlightenment. Got that Buddha back there. Enlightenment, like a light bulb moment where previously you might have been stumbling around in a dark room and then you turn on the light and you realize you see it differently. You see, oh, wow. Like I thought things were one way, but now that I can see, I can see that they're not this way and I'm getting the wisdom to live life more skillfully, more authentically, more joyfully, more lovingly. Could you share a few of your biggest insights, a few of your biggest uh, enlightenment moments or, or uh, wisdom teachings? So one was doing my 12-step work. Yeah. When I wrote my, um, my whole list of, of character defects and amends and all that, and when I read it to somebody, I felt totally naked. Mm. Like, and I remember, I didn't do any big bads. These are all little bads they were talking about. But they were all on my list. You know, little bads like saying to my brother, oh, Denny, put your lip on the ice cube tray. <laughs> and then to pull the skin off. Oh, you poor thing. I didn't know that would happen. I'm so sorry. Yeah, okay. So I wasn't outwardly jealous or hostile or angry with him at all, but a little bit of sideways stuff would come out. And when I became, learned to become open in 12-step recovery, it was the most freeing thing I could ever imagine. I didn't have to hide who I am. I didn't have to be ashamed of who I am. I mean, for a long time I was. I was ashamed that I was going to those meetings. And then I was so grateful that that came into my life and I had those meetings to go to and I had people that could love me just the way I was and then help me develop a plan so I could move forward in my own personal growth work. The second thing that comes to me is the woman that's my best friend, Robin, she is the one that held up a mirror to me and said, this is who you really are. Because I... I saw only the negative, you know, that what I told you before, my list of minuses went on and on and on, plus a good mother question mark. Yeah. And she's held up the mirror and said, look, this is who you really are. And I started being able to be open to seeing that, hey, I'm not so bad, I'm such a bad person. Hey, I am smart. Hey, I really am kind, you know, and recognizing things that I was already doing. But they were all hidden by the big, bad stuff that it was so looming. I, if I did 10 things in a day, nine of them were great. And a one of them I wish I would have done differently. Of course, I'd focus on that one. Forget the nine. You know, I need all 10 to be perfect in order to have a good day. Yeah. Yeah. So those are the two main things that I'm coming to th that I'm thinking about. The third thing is, after my son ended up taking his life, I became so much more multidimensional, just even that I could even hear his voice. Yeah. And I could tell it's his voice. He's got this attitude still, you know? So, for instance, I have still have his ashes. Not a lot of them. Most of them, he told us in the suicide note where he wanted them scattered. Over yeah. here at Disney World and over here on the boardwalk and over here at Universal. Yes, very specific. And I still have some. And when I went to... Glastonbury, England, a few years ago, and I was walking through the abbey, the ruins of the abbey, a place, excuse me, that I just love. And I said, Oh, Johnny, I'm sorry. I wanted to bring your ashes and I forgot to bring them with me. I'm so sorry. And the voice said, That's okay, Ma. This is your kind of place. <laughs> oh, my gosh. oh my gosh. You're going to make me cry here. Oh my God. Damn. Yeah. But I use the voice of. Uh, that was his voice, but that's the voice of compassion, the voice of, uh, yeah. it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, you know, that's the other beauty that he's not on the physical plane and he's opened me up to be able to communicate him. Well, I don't know if he opened me up, you know, you have to get your vibration high enough to be able to do it. And sometimes I can, so the, I'm not wearing it today, but I used to wear a pendant of his, mm. um, looks like this, but it's not this one, but it's a ceramic pendant and it was his mm. and I was wearing it every day. So early on I'm meditating and I think I hear his voice, but how can that be? How can I really hear his voice? You know, all this doubting, all the skepticism, skepticism came in, blah, blah, blah. And I said, and the pendant is ceramic. I said, Johnny, if this is really you, heat up the pendant I'm wearing. 
And the voice said, Ma, there's some things I haven't learned how to do yet. <laughs> oh, my so God. We had this great connection. You know? <laughs> That's a funny one. <laughs> and over and over again, whenever I use a medium, which I've done many times, I always hear him say, Ma, I got your back. Mm. I got your back. Yeah. Mm. So we have this interesting partnership now that would have been very different if he were still on the earth plane. Hmm. This has given me a lot to think about. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on. Well, thank you for inviting me. I'm very happy to share my story with you and your listeners and viewers, and you'll send me a link so I can post it too. <laughs>